one prediction for every NBA team this season published by Bleach Report. And today I'm going to buy or sell their predictions. I'm curious to see if there are any uh, bold predictions in here, some hot takes, if you will. Uh, Y'all know I'm a fan of a good bold prediction. I dropped some a couple days back. The internet didn't like that too much. Uh, but I'm curious to see if Bleach Report got some in today's article. Here we go. The Atlanta Hawks. Jalen Johns will be the team's second leading scorer. I'm going to 100% buy this one. I don't even know who the other candidates will be. Like, I don't think that's going to be Clint Capella as a roller. I don't think it's going to be Zachary Richasse as a as a uh, true rookie. DeAndre Hunter is not in the cards. Maybe it's like bogey off the bench. But for the most part, I think this is pretty safe. I think that Jalen Johnson is going to have borderline all-star productivity. Probably not going to get the nod because if anybody on the Atlanta Hawks is going to get it, it's going to be Trey Young. And I don't see them having a season where they have two all-stars. So I'm going to say 100% buy, buy, buy. Number two. Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum comfortably averages a career high in assists. Let me go check what that is right now. His career has 4.9. Super buy. And I'm not just going based on the fact that he had double digits yesterday. He's basically the point guard of this team. Like, of course, they have Drew Holiday and Derek White, who kind of are these hybrid point guards. But Jason Tatum is the guy running the show most of the time. This is an easy, easy buy. If I had to put a number on it, if it was 4.9 last season... I'm going to say this season he averages about 6.5. I'm going to be somewhat conservative, but I will say that he's definitely going to average a career high in assists. Next, the Brooklyn Nets will finish as the worst, the league's worst record. This is this is a good one. Uh, I think I'm selling this one because I think the Wizards might have a worse record, but it's probably going to be by a game or two because uh, the Brooklyn Nets do have the luxury of having Cam, Dora Finney-Smith, Spencer Dimwitty, Nicholas Claxton, even though Bogdanovich is super, super old at this point. Those are real NBA players, and they'll be here for at least a couple months, right, before the trade deadline when they're going to be all gone. The Washington Wizards don't have that many, like, I don't know, veteran, true um, NBA players like they do. So they'll probably win a few more games in the Wizards. That would be my prediction, but I ain't mad at this either. The Charlotte Hornets. Tajan Salon earns a rotation spot earlier than expected. I'll be here for it. The man got the ultimate green light, it feels like. During the preseason, he was letting them fly 30 feet, 32 feet, just getting the shots up. And they really enjoyed his confidence and how much he wants to get better as a player. So I wouldn't be surprised if Charles Lee put him in because I think Charles Lee is going to try to adopt somewhat of what the Boston Celtics do um, because, again, he's from that Boston Celtics tree of coaching. And they're going to try to get up a ton of three-point shots. You have a guy. I don't know what his percentage will look like because I wasn't really into his uh, play before he got to the NBA. But if he is a at least okay three-point shooter with his size as a defender, I wouldn't be surprised if he makes that rotation early on. So I'm going to say buy this one. Next one, Chicago Bulls. The front office get more than one first round. What? The front office get more than one first round pick for Zach Levine. I'm going to sell it, but Lord knows I hope we do. I'm excited for Zach Levine, man. Um, have not seen him play since what? January of last year? Or was it December? Basically, he didn't play a ton. And I, I, he's one of my favorite players in, in basketball, whether he's on the Bulls or on his next team. I'm going to be rooting for him. I, I don't think we're going to get more than one first round pick, but I hope so. Because uh, I think he's going to look back to the guy that was an all-star um, earlier, a, a few years back. I'm trying to figure out, do they have any speculation of who that team can be? And it don't look like it. I'm here for it, though. Cleveland Cavaliers, Evan Mobley, um, will, Evan Mobley will more than double his three-point attempts per game. So they're saying he averages about 2.5, at the minimum, 2.5 three-pointers per game this season. Uh, I feel like that's a tall task. Um, I think that will be somewhat more of the, in their identity, right? The way Kenny Atkinson is talking about Evan Mobley. I'm not, I don't know if I'm buying or selling this one. I do think his frequency will go up, but doubling it to make it that much, more than doubling it, I'm going to say a very tentative pass, but I want it to go up for sure. Next, we get the Dallas Mavericks, both offense and defense ranking the top seven of points per possession. I, I don't think that's out of the run possibility. Like a lot of people will talk about losing a guy like Derrick Jones Jr. and what that can mean to their point of attack defense. I'm less worried about it than maybe consensus. I don't think it's a, a thing that we should gloss over completely, but I do believe they could still be a very competent defensive team without a guy at the top of it that's, you know, well above league average. I'm, I'm going to uh, slight sell. I think the offense locked that in. So above number seven in offensive, that, that's almost a gimme. The defense top seven is a little bit tougher for me to get to. I do think it could end up top 10, but maybe top seven. So I'm going to stick to that and say slight sale. Oh my God, what a picture. Jokic wins his fourth MVP. I'm going to sell this one as well. I think voters fatigue is real. 
I think Nikola Jokic will still have every single advanced stats in his favor because of the, you know, his backup, of course, not being nearly as good as him. And he is the best player in the world, if you ask me. But I do think voter fatigue will be real, and my bet would be Shea or Luke. They couldn't get a better picture of my boy Yo Golly. Next, Detroit K Cunningham makes the all-star team. Ah, this is a tough one. The Western or the Eastern Conference. Let's just go through the standings. So here's the East. Again, we're talking about the guard position, right? Um, <laughs> even though they're the 15th ranked team in the league right now, Jalen Brunson is pretty much a lock. Tyrese Max, and this is this is if everybody's healthy. Tyrese Maxey is a lock. Damian Lillard will probably be a lock. I mean, he started last season. Tyrese Halliburton, obviously. Donovan Mitchell. I mean, Trey Young is not a lock, but like these are the competitions. I think those first four to five people, at least four of those first five people will make the All-Star game if everybody's healthy. So that leaves guys like Trey Young, LaMelo Ball, um, Kay Cunningham, Kobe White, Zach Levine. Nah, nah, nah. but it, there's just a ton, a ton of competition. And a lot of the times a tiebreaker when there is this much competition is who is in the playoffs. Like if you think about a guy like Trey Young who always puts up 27 and 10 a night or whatever the numbers are. Sometimes he doesn't make the all-star game because his team is just not good enough. And while I do believe the Pistons will be a be way better team this season, I don't know if there will be enough in the playoff hunt for him to warrant an all-star spot. I would be rooted for it, but I'm going to say a soft sell on this. Golden State Warriors, Jonathan Kaminga gets up more than five threes per, per game. Whoa! Last year, it was 2.2. That's, again, like Evan Mobley, more than double. Now, Steve Kerr has said he's given him the ultimate green light, and, and his numbers are definitely skewed because at the beginning of last season, he was somewhat in the rotation. Let me see what his numbers look like after he was, like, really, really there. Okay, it was still like, like 2.1 per game after he was really a staple in the rotation. Because of that, I'm a sale. Five threes a lot. Again, they have the ultimate green light to get him up. I don't know if he'll do that. So I'm going to say slight sale on that one too. Houston Rockets. I'm in Thompson. Reed Sheffers start more than half of the games. Oh, so that means a guy like Dylan Brooks, Jalen Green, who just got his extension, or Fred Van Vliet, who's going to what, the last year of his deal, lose their starting spot. Now they might be accounted for potentially getting some injuries in there. That's an interesting one, man. I, I want to read what their, their rationale is. Much of the same goes for Shepard. Starting him over Green, Brooks, or Fred Vliet flies in the face of the rookie veteran in pay grade politics, but his on and off ball threat level, coupled, coupled, coupled oh my God, with um, his try hard stamina on defense has already translated so well. He would be viewed as a rookie idiot from ah uh, more than half the games. Again, I think that's another sale. I think this is somewhat of a bold prediction and I'm here for it, but I'm going to say somewhat of a sale. Um, unless, again, like Ahmed Thompson takes a huge jump. And I don't, I don't have a problem with him starting over Dylan Brooks, but the thing is Dylan Brooks, for the most part, can provide some three-point spacing with shooting 34% last year on five attempts. And of course, he's got a few years in his career where he was about league average and sometimes a little bit more. Now, if he regresses back to this version of him or even last year's version of him of 32 percent, it makes it easier to start a guy like Ahmed Thompson, who also is not going to shoot a whale. But I mean, there's like a 10 percentage gap between Ahmed Thompson's three point shooting and Dylan Brooks. And again, Dylan Brooks ain't that great of a three point shooter. So I'm going to also sell this one. But I'd be happy for it because Ahmed is my boy. The Pacers um, will trade. For someone who closes game. Whoa. So that's Jairus Walker. That's Benedict Matherin's contract. And then what? How else do we get there? Because we think about closing games. You know it's going to be Pascal and Halley. It's going to be Miles Turner. So it's really between Nimhard and then Neesmith as the guys that won't be closing in this hypothetical thing. And I look at Neesmith as so much of a connector. People are leaving this court. As so much of a connector that he kind of fits as a guy that closes on so many different teams. So it's really like, is it Neesmith? And Neesmith has been tasked with being, you know, the stopper defensively. Who could that be given the small amount of contract wiggle room? Pacers fans, let me know. Is this something that's, that's been talked about in y'all, um, I don't know, their conversations and y'all fan base? Because it says low-hanging fruit, which means that this is something people have at least been talking about. I must have missed all of it. I'm going to say, let's buy it. Hell, let's buy it. Go get somebody. The Clippers, James Harden will lead the league in assists. I'm going to sell this one. I think he's going to be up there, though. I 100% think he's going to be up there. He's already talking about, you know, how he's in the best shape of his career is what he said. And without, you know, at least Kawhi Leonard at the start here, 
the ball will be in James Harden's hands to do what James Harden can do. Now, again, he's past his prime, so we won't be getting a Houston version of him, but he's still a really high quality NBA player as a, as a creator, and he might be the best pick and roll ball handler in the history of basketball. I don't think that IQ goes anywhere. I think him and Zoo is going to be one of the best pick and roll duos in basketball this upcoming season, but it's still tough for me to say he's going to lead the league in assists. So I'm going to say pass on it. I think he'll end up I think he can end up top five. Though. The Lakers, Coach J.J. Reddick's get them to finish in the top half of both three-point attempts and offensive rebounding rate. Well, this is exactly what we talked about on yesterday's video when we were doing our recap of the opening night. Um, they were dead last in offensive rebound rate last season. Uh, yesterday, they crashed the glass like no other. Last time they won a championship in 2020, they were top three. Um, they were number two in offensive rebound rate. And sometimes you have to go back to the bread and butter. And I think that's what J.J. Reddick's going to do. I'm actually going to... I'm going to buy this one because it's just in top half, not top 10, not, not, not top five, but in top half. And I'm going to say 100% buy this one. That's what their identity is and should be. Memphis Grizzlies, Zach Eady were average a double double with at least one and a half blocks. That's pretty bullish for a rookie. But given the circumstances, I, I would probably buy this one. Yeah, give me a quick buy. The Miami Heat, Bam and Abayo attempts more threes, more than three th triples per game. <sighs> he averaged, what, 3.5 in the preseason. They're running this five-out offense, at least in preseason. Every It's all about three-point volume in, in 2024, which, you know, I can understand why people be upset about that because it kind of changes the way the game is played. I think I'm buying Bam out of Bayo as a three-point shooter. Give me this one. Bye. Next, Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis is more efficient than ever. Huh? Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo posted a 64.9 true shooting percentage last season, outstripping his previous career high by a little bit, okay? Better shot distribution fuels my belief that Giannis can explore a new heights approaching his 30th birthday in December. Last season saw him cut down on mid-rangers and threes. This year is already seeing more of the same. He did not take a single three through two preseason appearances in just 16% of the overall attempts. Five total came. Wow. See, that's like some stuff that I ain't even noticed in the, the games that I watched the Bucks in the preseason, which is really just one game when they play against the Bulls. Um, I guess I'll buy it. If the numbers are saying he's taking less threes and in less mid-ranges, then I'll buy it because he's a dominant force in the paint. Buy it. Minnesota Timberwolves. Dante DiVincenzo gets more six men in the year votes than Nas Reed. It's definitely possible. On the podcast, I was talking about how both of these dudes should be candidates. And it might be close to, you remember that Utah Jazz season where it was Joe Ingles and it was Jordan Clarkson or the Clippers season where it was Montrezl Harrell and Lou Williams. I think both of these dudes are going to get votes. Dante getting more votes, let's say, sure. Um, at the end of the day, it won't matter too much. Pelicans, the recently extended Trey Murphy will finish the season as a starter. I will buy this one. This is basically saying that Brandon Ingram won't finish the season there. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Quick buy for that one. New York Knicks, Carthony Town sets a career high in three-point attempts per game. Everything is three-point volume. And his career high is eight per. Sheesh. His career high is eight per, basically. So they're saying he will average eight points something. Or eight exactly. Ah, um, I don't know. The way they used him last night, obviously this is the first night of him playing with the Knicks in a regular season game. Didn't make me feel too confident <laughs> in that. Um, he wasn't involved in any pick and roll or pick and pop with, with Jalen Brunson at all throughout the entirety of the game. And I think that's going to be really important for him to get up eight threes per. I'm going to say pass on this one. Eight, uh, 7 7.9 is a ton. Yeah, that's pretty high. That's pretty damn high. I'm going to say no. OKC will win at least 65. Whew, that is more than what the Celtics won last season, by the way, for what it's worth. The Celtics won 64. I'm going to say sale, even though I got them as the one seed out West, it is still the deep, deep Western Conference. This will, I think they won 57 last season. So this is them jumping up by eight. And they had some really good injury luck last season. I, I want that to stay the same, obviously. But I, I, I take the under if it was 65, for sure. Orlando Magic, at least four players will make 100 threes. Oh, man. We always talk about how the Orlando Magic haven't had a league average defense or offense since 2008. If they have four people make 100 threes, then that could definitely put them in the top 15 um, offensively. You're banking on Jalen Suggs, his three-point percentage of 39% being real. Uh, you're banking on Franz Wagner being able to recalibrate his jump shot for it to fall a little bit more. You're banking on Paolo Bencaro continuing to involve, evolve and making more three-pointers. So who's the fourth guy? Oh, KCP. Duh. Um, you know what? Let's buy this. Let's buy this. I'm here for the Orlando Magic having a good offense. Buy it. 76ers, the big three play at least a thousand minutes. <laughs> That's a red. <rant. laughs> That's a red, Philly fans. We're talking about total minutes played, man. Obviously, they now neither of these two guys 
on the right here are starting the season. Um, I'm going to say bye because I want them all to play healthy seasons. The Suns, Ryan Dunn makes all rookie. Oh, bank it. 100%. As long as he gets 20 minutes per game, there's not going to be many rookies that that would be more impactful, I think. Even if his jump shot that we saw in the, the preseason is not real, the defense 100% is real. Give me that one. Give me that one. Is it first team or second team is more of a question to me. I think as long as he's in a rotation, he'll make it. Uh, the defense is av is league average or better for the Blazers, um, at least until they start making trades. Jeremy Grant has the most, like, I don't want to be here face of all time. Now, obviously, this is one screenshot and them fighting for uh, Larry Market, who's crying through it. Um, but what a picture. League average, man. Portland finished 23rd in points allowed possession last season. That number is actually better than the situation suggests. Injuries are like... I think there's an argument. Like, I was talking to the guys and we were doing bold predictions and hot takes and yada, yada, yada. And my hottest of the takes <laughs> is that if the Portland Trail Blazers were in the Eastern Conference, they'd compete for a playing spot. Last year, they won, what, 26 games or something like that? I think that they have talent on the roster. Obviously, Shaden Sharp is already out with an injury. So I was basically saying that Scoop should be better this season. They traded for Denny Abdio, who can help you win more basketball games. DeAndre Aiden, for what it's worth, is still a good big in basketball. Like They have pieces that I think could make them at least competent-ish if they want it to be. I don't know if that's what they want to do. So you know what? I'll say they buy. I buy this. I buy this. Sure. Uh, Sacramento Kings. Keegan Murray receives multiple out-of-market all defensive votes. Bro, there's this thing happening in Illinois right now. If you're here, you probably know. Why are there so many lady books? I'm, I'm, I, you, I looked at my window and it's like six of them on my... I don't know what's going on. Either way, I mean, I don't, I'm not mad at it. Lady bugs ain't hurting me, but I'm just not used to seeing this many in the middle of the fall. I don't know. Um, Keegan Murray, all defensive votes. That's interesting. Um, And they had to specify out of market because you know that one guy is always going to vote King slash the bonus. Sure, I can buy this one. Keegan Murray was one of the best isolation defenders in all of basketball last season. I don't expect that to change. And he's going to be tasked pretty heavily with guarding the other team's best wing player most nights. So, sure, he could get a couple votes. I'm not mad at that. The Spurs. Victor Wimbiama finishes in top five in MVP, DPOY, and most improved. That's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, I've, I've said it before. I hate the way most approved player is voted on nowadays. But, again, if that's the way they're going to do it, he will be in the running. MVP, I, it's hard for me to get there, even if he is super impactful, mostly because they won't win a ton of games, in my opinion. Like, they're not going to be awful. Don't they're going to be better than last season. But in my mind, when was the last time somebody who was on a 500 or below team got top five in MVP? Like, that's a real question. I don't know the answer to. I guess I could research it, but I don't believe they're going to win more than 41 games this year. And 41 is even a stretch for me. I'm struggling to get to 35. So I think he could end up having top five impact in the league this season easily because of the defense and everything. But it's hard for me to see him being top five in MVP. And it's possible. If there's anybody that can do it and change everything, it's him. But I would rather go on history and just say, I'm going to sell this one. But he is a freak of nature. Next, you get the Toronto Raptors. Scotty Barnes joins the 25 and 8 club. Dang, dang, dude. So that's Luca, that's Trey, that's Oscar Robertson and Tiny Archibald and John Morant. Um, and all of these dudes did it before their 25th birthday. So being younger than 25, averaging 25 and 8. That don't sound too crazy to me, man. That don't, I'm going to buy it. That don't sound too crazy. Utah Jazz. Uh, Cody Williams finished top three rookie of the year voted. Whoa. Hey, I'm here for that. But I doubt it. I think that other rookies will just have more playing time. And a lot of times that playing time translates to votes. Like Zach Eady, um, Alex Saar, Zachary Rishasay, Rishasay. I think all of those dudes would just have the most opportunity to do it. And there are some other dudes down the line that also, I'm going to, I'm going to say sell on this one. Uh, we'll be cool if it happened though. The Washington Wizards very last Keyshawn George makes an all rookie team. Yeah. Keyshawn. I'm going to buy it. Why not, man? I like Keyshawn George's game. I like his game a lot. I don't know. Somebody keep a tally. How many things did I buy? How many things did I sell? I'm not completely sure, but that was really fun. Um, let me know what you think. Comment section. See y'all soon.